I'm a mathematical artist, and I, um, I'm going to talk to you about a piece I did called the Zen of the Z Pentomino. And let's see if I can move this along. Um, I like to combine different fields and different places, different disciplines. And in this, uh, developing this piece, I combined uh, things, ideas that, for example, came from these two books. Um, the one on the left, the mathematical part, uh, Polyominoes, A Guide to Puzzles and Problems in Tiling by George Martin provided me with some ideas. And then we have a book on shashiko patterns, which are a kind of Japanese embroidery. Here's some examples. They are done with white stitching on usually a solid colored dark blue fabric. And they're very precise, very geometric. And as you can see, they produce things that just look like tiles. So uh, going back to the math side, I started with the 12 pentominoes. We've heard about them in other talks in this uh, conference. Um, the, there are many problems and puzzles you can do with pentominoes. And we have, we have one on our badge. We have a packing of the 12 pentominoes into a square with a hole in it. But what I was interested in was problems of using a single pentomino and tiling the plane with it. In other words, taking multiple copies, arranging them to cover the whole infinite plane with no overlaps and no gaps. So here's some examples. Uh, this is all using the eye pentomino or the straight pentomino. And here's a colored version to show a little bit more of what's going on. Um, as you can see, a simple tile can produce complex patterns depending on the arrangement. Here's uh, some more examples. The N, the P, the T, and the X pentominoes in tilings that can be extended to cover the whole plane. And here's a shaded version. And you can see a bit more what's going on, including the fact that the one in the upper right is based on the reptile properties of the P pentomino. And it's sort of a substitution or recursive tiling. OK, so I was interested in the various tilings. And also, um, I want to make a piece of art. So how many different ways can I tile with, say, a given tile? And it soon became apparent that there's a lot of ways. And in fact, all the First of all, all the pentominoes can tile the plane, and all 10 of them can tile it in an infinite number of ways. So as an example, let's look at the T pentomino. Um, it can be formed into um, two infinite strips that have the same stair step profile. So they can be glued together. So if we call one A and one B, we can glue them together and say a pattern like A, B, A, B, A, B forever. Or I can choose another pattern entirely. And basically, it comes down to how many words can you make with two letters. And if there's no constraint on the word length, um, the answer is infinite number. We're in the infinite plane here, so I can keep pacing my A's and B's together in any way I want and produce an infinite number of tilings with the T pentomino. And that's pretty much true for the first 10 that were in this little table. But um, now for something different, we find that with Two of the pentominoes, there are a finite number of tilings. And in this case, I'm looking only at directly congruent tilings, no flipping over. So um, the X can tile in just one way. And the interesting fact is the Z pentomino can tile in six different ways. And uh, that was kind of intriguing to me. Here's a little table summarizing um, my experiments or investigations. And the first 10 tile in an infinite number of ways. We have the X tiling in one way. And we have the Z tiling in six ways. And this is when I had my own personal moment of zen. I said, wow, six patterns, that's something I can wrap my head around. Maybe that would make a good composition. Besides that, six is half 12. And Z is a really nice shape. <laughs> so what are the patterns I can make? I said there were six. Well, here are two that are made with the vertical or upright Z kind of spooned together in two different ways. And um, well, what's my arrow? Um, here are four more that can be made with a combination of vertical, vertical and horizontal. Um, well, we're going backwards instead of. Okay, so those are the two. Here are the four that are made with mixed copies of vertical and horizontal Z's, and uh, they're all different, but they look alike a little bit, and they have that kind of look I got from the Shashiko patterns, the feeling of a sort of a textile pattern to me. So I don't want to just make a composition that looks like a swatch book. I want to make something that kind of reads as a whole. And I went back to the textile examples I had and uh, found these two. Um, they're uh, in a vertical arrangement. They have a header and a footer, and they use two shades of blue. So I kind of used that as my model. 
Here's how I laid out my six patterns with the Z tiling. The ones that are, have just vertical Zs are in the header and the footer, and the mixed cases are in the middle, middle four squares. And um, that's a little boring, so I added um, some darker Zs for all the vertical Zs. And that gave me a um, header and footer that was more defined. It also brought the structure of the different tilings. You can start seeing rows and bandings and things that weren't evident before I did that coloring. Did one more thing. I looked at the primitive cell for each pattern. And these are periodic patterns. We can find a primitive cell of one or more of the fundamental uh, regions, the, the Z tile. And um, finding that, we can then make kind of a super tile, shown there in gray. And copies of that can then tile the whole plane by translation alone. It gives kind of a measure of how large or complex that tiling is. In this case, this example needs three Zs to form a primitive cell. So I put the primitive cells as sort of a visual element in the middle of each pattern in lighter shades of blue. Um, gives you a little more information and uh, it illustrates the size or complexity of each pattern going from a primitive cell of one to Z in the lower left, of oh, Z, seven in the lower left. So that's my piece, uh, the Zen of the Z Pentomino. And I did this as a digital print a couple of years ago. And I think it brings together ideas from geometry and also makes these sort of allusions to um, textile art and sort of a Japanese look and feel to it. So that's it, and thank you very much.